Welcome to This Week Live, the show. I'm Tad Johnson, Managing Editor of This Week Newspapers and the Dakota County Tribune Business Weekly. On today's show, we will talk to some Burnsville High School seniors about their past, present, and future lives. My guests are Amber Bunnell, Brian Puck, and Kyle Eckert. These seniors, along with the rest of the 690 member class of 2010, will officially graduate from Burnsville High School at 6 p.m. Friday, June 11, at Pate Stadium. Over the past 18 years of their lives, they have witnessed plenty of change in their community, state, and nation. Today, we will talk to them about their personal experiences and what their view of the future is. So thanks a lot for taking the time out to be with us today. And uh, uh, you guys are graduating here in, uh, in a week. I think you've got you know, a few days left of school. But uh, to get a sense of uh, what you'll kind of be feeling on uh, graduation day, what's, what's that going to be kind of like for you, Amber? Um. I, I think the feeling hasn't really sunk in. I still have that feeling of, oh, I get to come back in September and see see all my classmates again. And I think I think that feeling won't really hit until September 1st when I show up, you know, to college. That I, w I actually won't be coming back to BHS next year. Yeah. What about uh, What about you, Brian? Um, obviously, for most seniors, they're always counting down the last days till school, and you know, it's kind of starting to widen down that we're only, we're in the single digits now. There's five days left. Um, now it's starting to hit all of us that you know we're wrapping things up and we're going off to all different parts of the country, and this is probably the last time we'll be able to hang out with each other. So it's a surreal feeling, but really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Kyle? Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird to seem that it's over because it doesn't feel like it. I mean, I've been doing it all life, not like it's gonna be done. But we'll see. Yeah. Did the uh, did the senior year kind of fly fly by for you? Uh, tell me a little bit about that, about Brian. Um. Uh, basically, a lot of stuff just kept going on. I mean, some kids kind of go by semester to semester. Some kids like me kind of go by like event to event. Like what's going on? Like it was homecoming, and then there was football games and snow week and stuff. So, I mean, you kind of just go to like go into the flow of things, school activities and stuff like that, and you just go from the fun times and just keep going with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you, were you trying to slow things down at all, or uh, no. Kyle just? Definitely you kind of not. go with the. <laughs> Definitely not. What do you? What did you kind of uh, treasure most, maybe, in your your years here at Burnsville um, High School? Sports, all sports. I mean, like just lacrosse season just finished up. We did pretty well this year, but um, and then I play hockey during the winter. But it's just makes high school. I mean, and the football games in the fall. It's just great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your participation in uh, sports. What what has that kind of meant to you? Uh, kind of being involved in uh, something that's outside of the uh, the academic area, I guess. Well, it makes you feel more like in the school, I guess. I don't know, rather than just going through it, you're actually like participating in something besides classes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. What about uh, what about you, Amber? Has the uh, senior year kind of flown by for you? Um, it has completely flown by. I, I couldn't believe when semester one ended, and I, I still think I, I still can't believe that finals are only a few days away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have some, uh, you have some finals, so you still have some studying to do, huh? Mm -hmm. What's <laughs> <laughs> kind of uh, you get the uh, senioritis, I suppose. Huh? Um, yeah, it's it's hard to stay on track, but really, when you think about it, you've you've worked twelve years so hard. So I mean, in the last couple months, you should be able to handle. Right. Yeah. What uh, What about you in the the final week? Do you have some uh, finals to study for? Yeah, I have a lot of studies to final for, and I haven't really been proactive about getting my stuff done. And as my parents have told me, you have five days left. Just kind of hit it hard, and it's kind of hard to do that when you're just ready to be done. As so close as we are, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you're all kind of going, uh, like you said uh, earlier, kind of going different directions. So maybe why don't you tell me a little bit about what you're going to be doing after graduation and. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll start with you. Um, next year I'm going down to Iowa State for their engineering program. Okay, and how did you kind of select that out of your um, many choices, I suppose? Well, it's a really good engineering school, and I've, I've had like family members going down there. It's, pretty, it's a beautiful campus, though, so it's cool. Yeah, that's great. Uh, what about your uh, field of study? How did that kind of come, come um, about? Well, I don't know, because like all through high school, I've done the automotive program and stuff, which has been great, but uh, like it just kind of got me thinking that way, so... I figure I see all these things wrong in the automotive field and how they're doing it. I figure I can change it. So Right. Now you're going down to uh, Iowa. Do you have any uh, friends who are also going with you to Iowa State, or are you nope. kind of heading off on your own? I'm going on my own. Yeah, what do you feel about that? Oh, good. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Amber, uh, tell me a little bit about what you're going to do after graduation. Um, next year I'm going to be attending McAllister College in St. Paul, and I'm not sure yet, but I'm hoping to major in, like, English or history. Okay. Yeah. All right, how did you select that? 
at um, this point. I really liked their international studies program. They have a lot of, they're really involved like in the, in the global community and I really liked that. Mm -hmm. What about uh, being close to home? Was that kind of an important thing for you? Or it was, uh, I really like where it's located because you, you live on campus, but you know, if, if I'm feeling, you know, like a home cooked meal, I can, you know, hop on a bus and be home back at the Burnsville Transit Station in 15 minutes. So that yep. was nice too. Yeah, that is not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, what about, uh, are you, do you know of any friends that are going uh, to McAllister with you um, or what's? I don't have any friends going to that school, but a lot of my friends are staying in the Twin Cities area. So okay. I'll be able to visit them. Yeah, right. What about, uh, what about you, Brian? Um, I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps last November and I leave September 7th for boot camp. Okay. Wow. Uh, that was quite a decision. How did you, how did you kind of arrive at that? <laughs> um, it's something you kind of like, um, you think about it and you think about school and then you kind of just, you know, what if I did this? Um, I had a lot of support from my brother and sister because they're both active military also and I just kind of thought about it for a while. I went in and just got some information and I thought this is something I'd really like to do and I enlisted. Mm -hmm. What's kind of your expectations of, uh, of what you're going to be experiencing? Um, it's going to be pretty challenging. Um, it's basically from what I've heard it's mostly mental pretty much if you just go in there with a strong attitude and just do what you're supposed to do you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going into it with a positive attitude. Um, I'm going to prepare myself this summer for it and just go in there and Hopefully, do my best. Yeah, right. Uh, what are you uh, What are you going to concentrate in once you once you get there? Do you kind of get a sense of that? Um, I I pretty much have the idea that I want to go. Like right now, I'm in the attitude where I'm just ready to go. I want to go to boot camp. Um, I'm pretty sure once it starts winding down and it's time to go, I'm going to be a little apprehensive, nervous, excited, just all these emotions that go into it. Mm -hmm, right. Uh, I guess it's it's kind of interesting, you know, we're uh, living in, in unique times right now where we're involved in a couple of wars and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've had a lot of local uh, uh, people in Dakota County who have uh, part of the Red Bulls who have gone. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, how has that kind of factored into your decision that, uh, you know, we've kind of um, I haven't really thought about like the local stuff. I kind of just thought about, you know, I really need to do this for me and what I believe and my values. And I thought strongly about that. And I just felt like, you know, the Marine Corps is going to give me a lot of positive things that I can instill in my life. And so, yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting times that you've been living in, uh, especially the last few years. You know, we've kind of had an economic recession. Uh, you're kind of heading off to school now. You probably don't have to think about getting a job right now. But uh, maybe what's kind of your general feeling about, uh, you know, how the world is? Uh, are you generally optimistic or, uh, you know, there's always uh, some things to probably feel bad about. But uh, maybe, Amber, you want to tackle that one? It just kind of... <laughs> um, sure. Um, I remember somebody I looked up to once said something really striking to me, and she told me that the world's problems are growing increasingly more complicated, but the solutions remain just as simple. And I, I, I really agree with that quote. And even though a lot of people look around and say that our world is a mess, and, and they, they point out all the things wrong with it, and, you know, there is some validity to that, but I also believe that we, we can always still fix things. Mm -hmm. Right. What, uh, what kind of solutions do you think are out there? <laughs> um, I don't know. We just have to look to find the right ones. <laughs> yeah. What about, uh, you know, uh, have you talked with uh, some of your brothers and sisters? You said they're in involved in the military. What's what's kind of their outlook? Well, you know. Um, actually, um, Iraq's actually looking really good right now for my brother because he just got back from a tour in Afghanistan. And he said that the rebuilding process there is very strong. Um, he says that they've actually instilled a very strong government there and they're able to hold their own elections, which is really good and hopefully that we can not spend as much time in Afghanistan. That's what my brother said, and just hopefully just rebuild and just, you know, let them get on their course. And he said it's, everything's looking good, so. Hmm. That's a very, that's a great perspective to be able to have. Uh, Kyle, maybe tell me a little bit about, uh, you're going to be entering uh, the engineering field. Uh, what, would, what have you kind of heard about uh, your, uh, you know, future job prospects or anything like that? Are you thinking that far ahead? I don't know. I mean. <laughs> I suppose by the time we get out of college, we won't have to worry about it, but right. I mean, right now people just worry too much, I think. Mm -hmm. It's not as big a problem as they make it to be. Right. Um, we had a, kind of should probably talk a little bit about Burnsville High School here. Uh, <laughs> I, a, couple, uh, a couple weeks ago I had on uh, Mr. Burnsville, and uh, one of the questions <laughs> that he got, uh, he got asked uh, during, the, um, during the contest, I guess, um, was if you could change anything about the school, what would it be? And maybe uh, 
Why don't we, why don't we start with you, Kyle? Start with <laughs> <laughs> what the school? I don't know. Mr. Burnsville had an excellent uh, comment about it, about uh, central air being consistent throughout the school. <laughs> but I don't know. Since, in, since I've been here, I've had like probably over a semester straight of just auto classes like 12 hours maybe but um it's like the shop is really nice down there and I've, i see a lot of things in there that could be added to and because it's such a good program we have going right now that i mean right there I, it's what i focus on i mean it's great now but you know always improvements yep always right. what about you amber um the only thing that i guess i would change would be probably more support and you know financially and just mentality wise for the arts and um, the arts and music of VHS. I see sports get always gets a lot of uh, ooh, you know cheering and everybody knows what's going on um, but we have some really really great programs with like uh, like our drumline um, best in state for several years now and so just uh, making people more aware about that in the community too. Mm -hmm. Right yeah what about uh, what about you Brian? Um, I really don't see a lot of things that need to change about Burns. I think it's a really positive school. Um, obviously it's gonna have its tweaks now and then with the air conditioning obviously but <laughs> we have a lot of like strong organizations that are like promoting kids to be really good role models in the school and like there's pretty much no more like really violence at all. I mean, it's pretty much a safe environment. Mm -hmm. Right. Is there anything that you're going to miss about the school in particular? Um, probably just like the certain spots that like me and my friends we used to just sit and just chill out at. Um, just there's there's certain like spots in the school where you can be like I used to hang out there and talk to these people and we just had a great time there. Probably those are going to be good memories. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, what about you, Kyle? Um, I don't know. This school's great. I feel. Yeah. I mean, just you get to see all your friends and like, I don't know. That's that's the thing I miss. I, mean, I don't care about classes that much. I mean, I do. <laughs> but, but I mean, don't tell your teachers. I won't that. miss them. <laughs> I mean, just the relationships you get at high school is what what makes it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What do what are you gonna remember the most? Definitely the teachers and my classmates. Um, right now, I have every single class the exact same schedule as my two best friends, and so we get to spend the entire day together and. It's just it's just such a good environment, and everybody has fun and likes each other, and I'm gonna miss that. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned your teachers. Is there any uh, teacher that was kind of a, a mentor to you, or maybe one that just kind of stuck out? Or? Um, I really like Miss Weber in the English department. I had her last year for um, English 11, and then I have her this year for um, College in the Schools Writing, and she is just one of the most articulate, um, intelligent people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about uh, what about you? Any anybody stick out? Um, a lot of people don't like him, but I liked him a lot as a teacher. <laughs> um, Mr. Milenovich, um, I had him for American history all last year, and even though he's a bit of a smart aleck to me, and I was a smart aleck to him, um, I thought he was just a great teacher. You know, he was able to like just relate the information and stuff better to me. He was like, he kind of had his lessons based on more of a personal level instead of just all academic, and it made the learning environment a lot cooler. Right. They probably don't like him because he was too tough on him, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing, nothing else. But what about you? Any, anybody stick out as far um, as a, a teacher or a mentor or no, a coach? No, Tesmer probably. He's, te he's a shop teacher, but mm -hmm. I mean, he's a great guy. Yeah. What, would, what was it about his uh, teaching that kind of... I don't know, just the way that he could connect. And like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I spent like half my high school with him, so I mean, it's just kind of, you stay with the teacher all the time. I mean, he's mm -hmm. a great guy. Yeah. But, now, now uh, obviously, uh, we talked a little bit about the different places you're going to be going, but uh, if somebody asks you about uh, what it was like to grow up in Burnsville, what, what are you going to tell them about your, your hometown, I guess, you know, for people who are curious about uh, this, uh, this suburban environment that you grew up in? Um, I would say it was great. Uh, I have some friends who live in really rural country kind of type towns out in um, rural areas of Minnesota and they, they've never been to Valley Fair, they've never been to the cities and I think it's really great for um, us he students here at Burnsville to, for the teachers to be able to take us to field trips to go s to the Science Museum and to downtown to look at an art gallery. I think it's, I think it's a really great to live up, to kind of have the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. not be in the city, but be able to definitely go there. Yeah, all right. What are you going to add? Uh, I thought it was pretty, it's pretty great uh, growing up in Burnsville. Um, just some of the friends and the relationships you make through the years, all, good dating all the way back to elementary school and seeing them maintained through high school and just you have those great memories with those 
special people really make the experience worthwhile. So it was a great experience growing up in Burnsville. Yeah, what are you gonna tell them about? Um, <laughs> Burnsville, <laughs> it's great. Um, it's like, it's not too tight-knit of a community, but it's close enough that you can still have a bunch of relationships, but it's not too many. And you always see new people every day. And also what you were saying before is really good. Like, you're not too far away, but you're not too close. Mm -hmm. I mean, you right. can't have either. So. Yeah. Uh, we've, uh, you know, I've kind of learned in this brief time uh, that you all are kind of motivated and, you know, going on to do, you know, very interesting things. Uh, you know, there's a lot of criticism, uh, you know, labeled toward teenagers today. You know, you're connected to your iPods or, you know, you're sitting in the basement playing, you know, with the PlayStation or you're, you know, you're texting <laughs> all this stuff. Do you think your uh, generation gets a bad rap? And wh what would you say to people who are kind of critical of, of your, your age group, I guess, and maybe Amber? Um, yeah, sometimes I think that teens today get the batter up for being always tied to technology, though we are kind of tied to technology too. But I think that, again, that's something that um, is something that can be negative. You I mean, every kid can be on their cell phone too much, but I feel like our generation is going to be able to use our skills with technology to, um, to really change the future and change the way things are done. So I think it can be positive too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. What do you think of the, the bad rap you guys get? Um, I think <laughs> that the adults are kind of overcritical. I mean, we have a lot of like hard working, motivated people who actually have a destination. They have a plan. They know what they're doing and they're ready to just fill out their plans. I mean, for they're just basically trying to group us and stereotype us into being the lazy generation when most of us are actually just hardworking, motivated pe people. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, anything to add to that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I think that like people are scared because we understand a lot of the stuff that they don't, <laughs> like <laughs> like through technology and stuff. I mean, not trying to rip on them, but it's true. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. And most people are are scared of things that they don't they don't understand. So mm -hmm. uh, it's it's kind of a I guess it's a common perception. Let's uh, uh, let's say that uh, you you've become the uh, commencement speaker for Burnsville High School. What are the kinds of things that you would? Uh, what's maybe a message you would send to your your fellow classmates? And maybe we'll start with you, Brian. Um, try not and just be sad that it's over. Just be glad that this experience actually happened. Um, it's a positive positive experience. It's a happy time. It's also a sad time because a lot of us aren't going to see each other for a long time, if ever again, because we're all growing up, we're going off to our um, duties, going off to school and stuff, and just be glad that this happened and don't be sad about, like, the negative times. Mm -hmm. what, about, uh, what about you, Kyle? I don't know, it's just, like, such a small part of our life that we need to take a step back and realize that it's not, it's not a huge deal that it's over because it's just helping us get to the next step, and after that, there'll be a next step, and then we'll just keep going up the ladder until successful I suppose. Yeah all right we can only hope. What about you Amber? I would say remember all the all the good memories and stories that we had and that we were really all in this together. <laughs> yeah um, we uh, we kind of talked a little about something that you might change uh, at, at Burnsville High School. What about uh, I guess in our maybe in our state or, or our country even uh, or is there something that you would really like to see changed uh, that, that you've always kind of thought about and maybe Amber will start with you. Um, I guess this is kind of a lofty goal, but um, we, we studied this in econ, how uh, a leading factor in childhood obesity and uh, like malnourishment is the government subsidizing corn and how everything is really unhealthy because it's, it's just made with corn and it doesn't have that much nutritional value. So I guess, I, I don't know what you can do with this at like the, you know, the state or local level, but I would love to see you know, fresh fruits and vegetables and organic stuff. Um, subsidized I guess. <laughs> yeah that is a that's a huge issue do you see that uh, uh, you know just as far as the inactivity part of that uh, do you uh, you know obviously uh, your generation also gets a bad rap for yeah. you know this childhood obesity thing but do you find that that's that's true at all among your friends that they're oh. kind of laying around? Or? I, I definitely think so and I can see like the the health choices in like the school lunchroom too I mean even like the healthy stuff isn't really that healthy. Yeah. Well, we can we could probably do something about that yeah. with the school board. What about you? Anything uh, you'd like to change? Um, obviously, it's kind of a broad, but the economy, obviously, you know, it's not very good right now. The job loss is pretty uh, high, and um, I'm, not, I'm positive that it's going to get better. Um, it's just it's a natural cycle. It's up, it's down, and we're just in a down period right now. Um, we get the jobs up, cl balls start rolling again, and we'll get the money going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about? Um, I don't know, it just kind of makes me mad how 
like since ever since I've been growing up, I like my parents have been pushing hard work and like you gotta make your money and all that. And I just, just like seeing all these people going to debt and like just sitting back and letting the government take stuff from them, like repossessing their house or something. It just kind of, I mean, I don't, I can't understand it now why people don't work and try to get themselves further in life. But I don't know. That needs to change, yeah. definitely. And you mentioned your uh, your parents. Uh, can you talk about uh, how supportive they've been of you over these past 18 years? And of course, now they're gonna they're gonna kick you out of the house and make you go <laughs> off to college. What what can you say even about uh, your parents or other other people who have been supportive of you through the through these past few years? Well, I mean, ah, uh, all my life I've been surrounded by well, kind of surrounded by people who always are, like very successful and like wanna like try real hard and like push themselves towards raising herself up to the next level and like oh I, I mean i figured just my surrounding like I f for a while i needed to figure it out but i think i got it pretty good now they got you back on the straight path yeah. huh yeah what about you Any, anything you want to kind of talk about your parents and getting you in the right direction or anything like that um they've just been very supportive of me through everything i've been through whether it's just sports or based on my, my post high school plans they just always supported me um, no matter what I decided to really do, so. Yeah, that's very important. What about you, Amber? Yeah, my whole life I've been surrounded by role models, like my parents and teachers and other people in my life who have always pushed me to c become better and always supported my decisions and and really had my had uh, you know been looking out for me. And I just I know that I would not be in the position that I am today without without their help. Yeah. Now you've got obviously a, a summer ahead of you. Uh, you might be heading off a little bit before <laughs> then, but uh, what are you going to do in the uh, in the time that you have you know left to prepare for for your next phase? Uh, what are you kind of planning on doing this summer? Yeah, Amber. Um, well, I am a barista at Dunn Brothers Coffee, so I hope to work more over the summer to uh, earn some money. You know, pay for some textbooks next year. And then I'm lucky enough to get to spend the entire month of July um, with some of my friends in Taiwan. Oh, so wow. That'll be fun. That's very exciting. How did, uh, how did that kind of come about? Um, my best friend, or one of my best friends, moved here from, from there, Taiwan, um, in eighth grade. And every summer I would ask her, can I come back with you? Because her grandparents still live there. And this summer she said, sure, buy a plane ticket. So. Wow. Well, that'll be very exciting. Yeah. So a good, a good summer vacation. What about you? Uh, um, I'm pretty much just going to catch up with a bunch of people, go to a bunch of grad parties and just say hey to a bunch of people before I go, work a little bit, and then just start preparing myself um, for the upcoming months until I go. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, do, when do you leave? I leave in September, so okay. I have all summer, and I'm just hopefully just preparing myself, as I said, and just getting ready to go. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Kyle? A lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> need money for <laughs> College is expensive. But, That's um, right. I don't know. I suppose... The time that I work, I'm work real hard this summer. But when I'm not working, I'm let me hang out with my friends, you know, because those connections are probably going to be gone. I mean, a couple months or out of a year, it's not much for the right. next couple of years, no. Well, it's uh, graduation's only a, a few days away. It's yeah. going to be on uh, June 11th. We got uh, some some sighs of relief probably here, and uh, uh, I'm sure you're very excited about that that ceremony. And uh, uh, good luck to you all in the future here, and uh, mm -hmm. congratulations on. Uh, graduating i'm sure uh you'll you'll look back on these years and uh with some some really fond memories so it was really great to have you here on the show and uh, thanks for giving me a little bit of your time so that is about all the time that we have left on our show so uh you can find more news and information on our website uh and a webcast of this show at thisweeklive.com and uh thanks for watching and have a great week <laughs>